Hi, I'm Barbara Gustafson with Discover Next Up. And today, Project FXBG has been highlighting a personal story uh, with Joni Kanakauza. And today, she's brought with us her doctor, Dr. Christopher Vaughn. So I want to welcome you both. And let's start with you, Dr. Vaughn. Share with us uh, exactly what you do and how you're helping empower other women. Well, I'm a, a medical oncologist, so I, um, I've been practicing now in the Fredericksburg area about eight years. And, um, you know, I, I tend to help guide women after they've gone through surgery, usually um, have had either a, a lumpectomy, which is much more common now, or a mastectomy, and then helping really prevent it from coming back a lot of times, which can either be, it's more advanced or more high risk. That can include chemotherapy. Um, if not, and it has hormone receptors, sometimes just anti-estrogen therapy alone can be given for about five to 10 years to prevent it from coming back. And trying to help guide them through that journey of how to generate some general wellness habits and to make sure that they're doing everything and empowering them to live a healthy life and to reduce the risk of it coming back and to be a survivor of breast cancer. Mm. And we know that timing is critical and it can totally impact someone positively or negatively. Talk to us about early detection. Uh, we know the importance of it, but talk to us even more about how critical it is and uh, just what you share with other people. Well, I think, you know, as far as prognosis and being able to cure cancer, uh, when you catch it early, that is when cancer is cured. And so for breast cancer, detecting it at such a small size or early stage is really the most important thing as far as surviving uh, breast cancer which relies, I think, especially in younger women, relies on self-detection and self-exams um, uh, because most of the time patients will discover it on their own if they're doing uh, the daily, exam well, not daily, monthly exams. And it's just important to um, just have it become kind of habit uh, once a month at a mm -hmm. certain time, usually about five or 10 days after uh, menstrual cycle to just to, to examine the breast and make sure nothing feels unusual um, because some women may have um, some some cystic breast or, or, or dense breast, but it's hard for sometimes providers to, to be able to understand what's different or not, as everyone else knows their body the best. So it's it's important to do self exams, and if it's caught early, it's extremely curable. Mm. And Joni, I know you caught yours early. Can you share with us a little bit about that? Absolutely. Um, in the shower, that was my. Everybody has their own place that they have found comfortable to get to know your body, but. Soapy in the shower, you could, you know, do a self-exam and again, um, going through on a monthly basis. But for me, on the time I was on the marina, so I had no clue what my cycle was. So if you do it, you know, more than once a month and see, you know, your hormonal changes. And because I also have, as it runs in my family, very dense breasts. And, but I could see things that were different. Um, than just that dense tissue versus something that felt like, you know, a frozen pea and um, wasn't really connected. And that was something that I could monitor. And as it slowly grew over the two months of being in town um, after we just moved here, I, I realized, wait a minute, this mm -hmm. is not my typical body. This is something foreign. Mm -hmm. um, so then I scheduled an appointment with my the, the first doctor in town, the OBGYN, and went directly to get the mammogram and sonogram. Um, and talk to us maybe about some of the common mistakes uh, that women make or things that they miss. I, I think, um, well, one is I think just not doing it enough. Uh, I think uh, one exam every six months is not enough because you have to really get to know your body and, and things change based on certain, especially younger women, certain cycles may create some changes. So you get to kind of you get repetition and you can kind of follow that. As Joni was saying, something wasn't right and then she did a good job of following it and noticing that spot that wasn't right and it grew and that alarmed her, alarmed her. And those are the kind of characteristics you find in some that may be malignant and she was right on and caught it. So mm -hmm. something that doesn't match up and it, and doesn't, and it changes. And that's why it's critical, I think, to do it regularly, at least once a month. And what are some other areas that women can be proactive in to really um, decrease the risk of developing cancer? I think when we look at um, 
breast cancer, for instance, and we talk about this in models of survivorship and other things, is, is really, I think, a lot of it is, is based on, on estrogen exposure. Um, and so we do worry about extra supplements of estrogen. We also encourage, really, a general wellness approach uh, of weight loss and weight, weight gain can be a predictor now that looking at not only breast cancer, but a lot of other cancers, obesity, the big risk factor for cancer. So some general approaches of activity, exercise, and trying to limit extra supplements of estrogen. Mm -hmm. And Jeremy, having Dr. Vaughn with you on this journey, what was that like for you having him? What did you like about him as a doctor? He let me drive him crazy. <laughs> <laughs> True, yeah. He laughed at my crazy jokes. <laughs> um, but um, the, the team of doctors that I had here, and especially Dr. Vaughn, would just truly listen and break it down to, my husband and I are built very differently. He's very the critical thinker and I'm the emotional one. And to have a, a, an amazing doctor who would sit there and explain it one way and then on a dime, explain it to me, you know, where I understood it or that in a way that mattered to me. Um, you know, my hair loss was something that was really tough on me. Um, and he, he knew that, uh, you know, about uh, anybody going through cancer treatment and certain chemo regimens and, and how that could happen. Um, whereas that wasn't what my husband was really focusing on when we were there. He was just worried about losing his wife. Um, so having an amazing doctor that would sit there and kind of be able to look at your patients and those co-survivors um, and the people that are in that room with you and, and break it down and explain it in different ways, I think that was tremendous. And again, keeping us laughing. You know, life is short. We've got to, you know, laugh through the hard times. Otherwise you cry, right? So having a, an adopter that has a sense of humor was great. Love that attitude. And I, I like how you described that because um, any doctor can treat a patient, but to really be able to connect with a patient makes all the difference in the world because they feel like they're you know, being listened to. They, um, they feel valued and that they do matter. And I think that's critical to any, you know, especially health journey that we do go on. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. So what inspires you most about Joni as a patient? Uh, her, <laughs> she did drive us nuts, <laughs> um, <laughs> but no, it's, I think no, she she's wonderful, and she provided just um, as as most patients are coming in very anxious about about the journey, uh, but she provided energy. Um, she's just just her, her strength, her courage. You can just see it every day, and uh, and it's it's just rewarding to help help hold the hand, you know, a little bit as we start. But you can just see the confidence build and her ability to handle. The side effects, the struggles as everyone goes through, but just her courage was, was remarkable. Mm. And what would you share to one of your patients who's early on in the journey to help encourage them? Well, I, I think from experiencing like patients like Joni, look look where they are now, three to four years from now, and um, it, it's a it's a tough road. There's some you know some side effects, hair loss, fatigue, things you just gotta kind of kind of go through. But in the long run, to, to survive this, in some sense, and to change life for the better. In other ways, how you approach life and your family, and um, I just try to try to get them through those initial struggles mm -hmm. and help them. Well, thank you both for coming on. This has been great yeah. to see you together and just share that journey that we went on together.